Welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you guys another video. So today we're going to be taking a look at a few different topics, namely VeChain, also taking a look at Ethereum and Bitcoin dominance. So this video is going to be pertaining more towards altcoin hodlers. Also, I've got some information for those of you who are interested in VeChain. Sunny Lu just gave a speech here at the Shanghai International Blockchain Week that just occurred a couple days ago. So we're going to be taking a look at his speech and talking a little bit about the VeChain project. So if you guys are interested in that type of content, please be sure to smash that like button for me. It definitely lets me know that you enjoyed. And if you're new to the channel and if you do find some value, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I post cryptocurrency content like this as often as I can. I want to bring you guys information about crypto markets, news, updates, information. All of that is here on this channel. Click that notification bell also so you can get notified when I post a new video. So guys, let's go ahead and get into it. What we're going to be taking a look at here to start things off, I've got the overall market pulled up for you here, taking a look at coin market cap. What we saw recently was Bitcoin dropping below uh, 10,000. And one thing that is very interesting to see, we're going to take a look at the charts here in just a moment, but the price of Bitcoin was defended by the bulls at that $10,000 level. There was a big wick that came in. We had a whole bunch of buyers come in uh, as the Bitcoin price dropped below 10,000. And that was last night. I was watching the Bitcoin price and uh, it was really interesting to see that, you know, waking up, we just saw this big wick. But uh, what I did want to point out here is that Ethereum is actually up 4% compared to Bitcoin. Right now, Bitcoin is still deciding whether or not it wants to make a break for the upside or the downside. But what we can see is some of these key players here. Ethereum is up 4%. Stellar Lumens is up 7%. Stellar Lumens is doing phenomenal right now. Uh, and a lot of these top altcoin players, Dash is up 6%. You know, a lot of these names that have been around in the space for a while, Chainlink, up 5%. Now, a lot of these coins have had a nice little pump uh, over the past couple days, and a lot of them are correcting a little bit, still able to maintain some of those gains. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here, especially if Bitcoin decides to break to the upside or the downside here in the coming days. But moving on here, I wanted to take a look more specifically at VeChain. So VeChain right now is, you know, the price is still very, very much depleted. And as far as where we are in the broader cycle, I think we're still at a very optimum price point for VeChain. For those of you who are interested in adding in longs, guys, this is not financial advice. Please do your own research. This channel focuses namely on the news and information side of things. I'm not going to tell you guys what to do with your money. So with that being said, I've actually got an article pulled up for you here talking about the speech that Sonny Liu gave. So reaching business consensus, a tough yet important task. So we're going to be taking a look at this. I've got some key points for you. I am going to link this article down in the description below. So if you guys would like to check it out, please be sure to do that. There's a lot of valuable information. So let's take a look at some of these key points. Now, this speech is coming from the Shanghai International Blockchain Week which was just a couple days ago. And what we're looking at here, so Sonny Liu is talking about VeChain and a couple of key points from his speech here. So highlights. So it might be of a higher priority to explore the business value of blockchain rather than solving technical issues. After all, technology is supposed to serve the real economy and create business value before it continues to develop. Blockchain is an invisible technology to some extent. It can be compared with the underlying technology architecture of the internet. With only professional teams and enterprise level applications, we can promote the development of blockchain technology and in turn boost its mass adoption. The VeChain Thor blockchain comes with various innovative technical features such as fee delegation, multi-party payment protocol, multi-task transaction, and more. All right, so guys, those are just some of the key highlights from the speech. We're going to be scrolling a look, taking a look down here as well. These are some of the products that have been announced and launched by VeChain. Uh, I think it's really cool to just see a visual representation of that. So with VeChain Toolchain, users are no longer required to pay attention to the underlying blockchain technology. All they need to do is register their business and products on the VeChain Thor blockchain. In addition, VeChain has been constantly standardizing VeChain toolchain and adding more modules to it. 
So with this in mind, we are positioning ourselves as an enabler between blockchain and real business use cases. We are looking at this matter from the perspective of the product manager. We put ourselves in their shoes and think about what tools and services we should provide as a public blockchain platform to meet the demands of each individual builder. We also have a one-stop center for all our technical documents at VeChain World. In addition to that, we host the annual VeChain Summit, which is a global conference that provides startups with an opportunity to network with established enterprises and see how they can work together to build valuable applications on the VeChain Thor blockchain. Nice, okay, so very cool to see that. Those are just some of the key highlights from the speech. I would recommend you guys check it out. It's rather lengthy, so I'm not going to I'm not going to bore you guys just by reading the article for you. But I wanted to give you my thoughts on what are some of the things that VeChain is going to be and is going to be aiming towards as far as their their roadmap and their mission. So, from following the project now for quite a while, you know, we see that VeChain is focusing on huge huge enterprise uh, partnerships. You know, we see the partnerships coming from DNVGL. Um, we see them partnering with Walmart. Guys, there's a whole host of partners that VeChain has, but essentially the purpose behind their blockchain is they want to solve the the business application behind traceability. So origin tracking is all going to be paramount with the VeChain Thor blockchain. And I guess what they're trying to come at here is that they want to solve the the use case, right? They want they want blockchain to become adopted. They don't want blockchain to just be something that's talked about. You know, we see I mean even if you take Bitcoin, if you look at Bitcoin for example, you know, we we use Bitcoin nowadays in the space as a store of value. That's what it's considered as. You're not necessarily going to go spend your Bitcoin if you know that it's going to hold and retain value as money. Whereas something like VeChain, if it's used by enterprises, it can be used as as opposed to like a means of payment. It's going to be more so for the tracking of the origin of certain types of products. And we see this a lot of the products that they're working with here. You know, we I talked about wine traceability. Um, there's a shoe company that VeChain is partnered with because I know that in China, you know, there's a big high-end market. You know, you got brands such as Louis Vuitton, you know, like all these high-end brands, right? There's a lot of knockoffs for those products and consider the, the market share that those products have. You know, if you, if you put a fake product with a certain brand or a logo on it, that is taking away from the products that are legitimate. So VeChain is aiming to solve that problem by by giving the the space more legitimacy, more transparency. And I think it's cool to see that VeChain has had, you know, some of the most amazing partnerships in the space. So very interesting to see guys. You know, I am I'm very fortunate, I'm very uh, bullish on the VeChain Thor blockchain. And when I say fortunate, I mean like just being involved in the space right now, guys. You know that we're super early. You know, people aren't talking about this right now. If you guys are, this is like investing in the internet back in the early 2000s. So, you know, for those of you who have stuck it out, who are still involved, not so much for the price, but more so for the tech and the adoption and the use case, kudos to you. Let me know what you think. I would love to know what type of what type of excitement you get from VeChain? You know, what projects do you think are going to complement VeChain? Do you like VeChain? And do you think that it's something that's going to do well in the future? Let me know down in the comments section below. So moving on here, I did also want to take a look at a couple of key players here. This is Ethereum. Over the past couple days, Ethereum has definitely been feeling the love. There has been some light at the end of the tunnel for some of these altcoins. And I wanted to show you this. This is something that I found very interesting. You know, we had a significant correction back in June. The price topped out at around about 360, and the price fell, you know, at the beginning of September to about 160. So really big, really big correction there. But now what we're seeing is uh, over the past few days, you know, just some upwards price action. And one thing I find significant here is that we are now resting on top of this 200 period moving average. Now it's very significant because over here, if we take a look, we had came up to try and test it. We were not able to break it. 
not able to break it. And then once we broke it, guys, we came back to touch that support and we just took off from there. So I think that that is very significant here, considering also the indicators that we've got pulled up. I've got just a few of trying to keep it as simple as possible for you. So I've got the stochastic RSI clearly in overbought conditions. Also, the MACD is sloping upwards into the positive territory. So the favor is in, in the favor of the bulls. Um, you know, the bulls definitely have the upper hand. And I think that what we can see here is the lack of volume. So I would be waiting to see for a break on some strong volume. I'm thinking it's going to be in the direction of the upside based on what we can see here. You know, we might have some consolidation just because we would need to take a breather from the upwards price action that we've been having but I would think that's totally healthy and also touching on that note I did want to take a look at the Bitcoin dominance chart so this is something that I find very interesting considering that Bitcoin dominance had gotten to a point of about 70 percent and what we can see here is that we were not able to clear that 70 percent or hold it rather you know we went all the way up to touch even 73 percent but what we can see now is that we are currently at 69%, so right under that key even level at 70%. And we, we had come up, this area is very confluent with an area that we had touched before. And it's almost like a doji that's forming right now, this candle here. And one thing to note also, the MACD we have sloping towards the negative territory. Uh, stochastic RSI is an oversold. And the bearish volume is sloping to the upside. So we can see the confirmation of the bear volume coming in. We are in oversold conditions. So as far as Bitcoin dominance, the bears have the upper hand. Now, what I'm seeing here based on that, you know, you got the top altcoin by market cap, Ethereum, making some moves up here, and Bitcoin dominance unable to hold. We'll see if this doji is able to hold and where we can get a bounce from here. Based on this bear volume, I think that might be unlikely, but we're gonna keep an eye on it. So with that being said, is an altcoin in the possibility of, of happening? Is there an alt season around the corner? Let me know what you guys think. I would definitely like to know your opinions. What altcoins are you very excited about for this next coming cycle? What are your strategies? Are you going to be taking profits into Bitcoin, taking profits into stable coins, and then earning interest on the stable coins? I would love to know to hear what you guys have to say about that. Uh, as far as me personally, again, guys, this is not financial advice. I have got my position, my long-term allocation is set. Um, it's taken quite a while, you know, I've been in this space now for a few years and it's taken me all of that time to come up with a portfolio that I am very comfortable with holding for the next five, 10 years, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, that is pretty much what I have for you guys here in this video. Again, I would love to know what you guys have to say about VeChain, about altcoins. Let me know down in the comment section below. And again, if you liked it, please be sure to drop a like for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.